Okay, so it's barely six weeks since Google released Gemini 2.5 Pro and the whole new family of 2.5 models. And at the time I did a video going through not just so much the benchmarks of this, but really showing some of the things that it was really good at, like the advanced coding, like the reasoning, etc. And then since then I've made multiple videos with 2.5, basically showing how well it could do with things like audio transcription, how well you could use it for YouTube analysis, et cetera. But definitely where this model really struck a nerve is the whole element of coding. And if we come and look at various things like Reddit groups and stuff like this, we see a whole bunch of people talking about using 2.5 Pro with Cursor, with Windsurf, with a whole bunch of different agentic coding tools, et cetera. And we've really seen this become one of the most popular models for coding and tool use. And this is where today Google has decided to double down on that. So today Google is releasing a new version of Gemini 2.5, which is a new preview version. And what has changed? The thing that has changed is Google's really doubled down on the whole idea of coding. So while they've made improvements for reasoning and they've been able to see what people have been using this model for, for various multimodal tasks. The big thing that they've really doubled down on is coding. So in this video, I'm gonna look at some of the things that you can do with this model. I'm gonna look at where they've improved some of the coding things. Also, I wanna show you how you combine using some things that I've shown you with YouTube and with various docs in different formats and the long context window, put it all together and get Gemini to basically just code you something using its long context window and reasoning to be able to create new code from the context that you actually put into it. So let's jump in and have a look at some of the examples for this. Okay, so one of the first things that I tried when the first version of Gemini 2.5 Pro came out was to make an Angry Birds game. And back then, doing it didn't work out that great. In fact, if I run the code that it created back then, you can see that really, while it's got maybe some idea of it, it's definitely not working very well. So one of the first things I wanted to try was, okay, with the new version, let's see if it's improved at all at being able to create a Angry Birds game using Pi game. And sure enough, it's using its chain of thought thinking or its long step-by-step -step thinking in here. And it's really interesting to see that it's actually getting a lot better at defining sort of what are the key elements of this. So it's very much sort of making plans and breaking things down and then putting them together. And sure enough, so it goes through the whole thinking there and it basically comes out with what it's going to implement in here. And you can see that it's got some instructions of what I need to do to set it up. And then it's got a single file all in Pygame setting this up that we can just copy. So after copying this over and setting it up, I decided, okay, let's run it. Let's see what we actually get. You can see already we're getting something that's looking a lot better. And now we've got something that actually we can draw the ball back and actually play the game of Angry Birds. Maybe not great looking and maybe I'm not playing it very well, but you can see, oh yes, I win. All right. So you can see that we've got a sort of Angry Birds clone this time, much better than what we had last time. And I think this is a good example of how I'm noticing that this model is definitely more polished in its coding abilities than the previous version was. We can do the same thing here, basically asking it to make a Space Invaders game and just getting it to, you can see like what it's going to basically include. It seems much better now at taking those thoughts and then converting them into a very clear, useful, sort of thought out, structured kind of plan in here. And you can see, sure enough, when I come in and run this, I've got a Space Invaders game. Now, it does look like the sort of shelters are disappearing at the start, but the rest of the game is playing quite fine in here. So enough with just testing sort of games and testing sort of things like this. What I'm really interested in is how can we actually use this for practical coding tasks? And here I want to show you one that I think is really kind of cool. So I've been playing with the Google Agent Development Kit over the last few weeks, trying out different ideas, trying out to work out its strengths, its weaknesses, what we could use it for. And it occurred to me in here 
is that since the previous version of this model was already so good at dealing with videos, and we know that we can pass in text files of long context, like all the docs to ADK, like some samples for ADK, like some various reference files, etc. The cool thing here is even if we put in a video, which takes up a lot of tokens and a few text files, you can see that I haven't even filled half of the context window in here. So going from this, I can basically just say, okay, here's a bunch of context. What I want you to do is use all the, this source materials and video guide to make me an agent with the Google ADK framework that can handle customer support queries for my new online sneaker store. We sell limited edition sneakers and we need a chat agent that won't be rude, but will make sure people can't trick it into promising sneakers that are already sold out. It would be cool if the agent had a personality of a sneakerhead. Now you can see I've got typos in there. I've got a whole bunch of things going on there. But then if we look at the sort of thinking from this, it can work out that, okay, I need to understand the goal. The user wants a custom support AI agent, key requirements, handle customer support queries, sneakerhead personality, polite, not rude, prevent promising sold out sneakers. So it needs inventory awareness and it needs to use Google ADK. Then it goes off and starts working out, okay, what are the ADK concepts? So based on the video, so now it's watched the video as it's gone through this, it's worked out some of the key concepts from there. It's then getting ideas from the various text files that I've put in with the docs, with different examples, stuff like that in there. It then decides to create a persona for this. It starts to work out what tools it should have. And it basically starts to put the whole thing together. Now we can see that after it's done its thinking and actually comes to the output, it basically comes out with that. Okay. It's going to use an LLM agent. It's got personality and logic for this. It's got tools that it's going to use in here. Obviously it's going to make some dummy data because I haven't really given it much instructions in that. Now notice I never said anything about tools. I never said what it should put in there. It's just come up with this itself. Now it's worked out the directory structure for this. Let's work out the requirements file that I need, a tools file and an agent file in there. And then it's gone through and given me each of these files. And you can see that sort of made a mock inventory in here of what we've got in here, what we don't have going through this. So basically I've just come up with an idea for an agent. I've chucked all this context into the model and then I've just said, code this for me. And amazingly, and to be honest, I wasn't sure that like, okay, in one shot, can this thing actually do this? I'm probably going to run into problems. Let's see what happens. But surprisingly, just taking the code across, copying over, putting in my API key for Google AI studio, and then coming down here and literally just doing ADK web, which is how we can start one of these things. I can basically get this thing running. And I haven't really, everything I've got in there, I've basically just copied over from the model output. And you could imagine that if I was using this via the API and I was using Ada or some of the other open source tools, I wouldn't even need to do the copying across for this. But let's go in and have a look at how this actually turned out. Okay, so you can see that this is using the ADK web interface in here. If I type right there, how are you? We can see, sure enough, we've got some of the personality happening. Yo, what's up? I'm good. What can I help you with today? So it's definitely got the personality down and stuff like that. All right. Let's say I want, knowing what they've got in the inventory from having looked at it before, let's see how this handles. Okay. Nice choice. Those are definitely classic. What size are you looking for? Let me check our stock. What sizes? Okay. We can see here it's now used a tool, right? So check inventory. Okay, so we can see that going through this, I can have a conversation with it. I can ask it what size it's got, etc. I can get those added to my cart and you can see that, okay, it's done that. Now, here's an interesting thing, right? I haven't even looked properly at the prompt here, but one of the things obviously is sort of guardrails. We want to make sure that this has some kind of guardrails in here. Now, I didn't specify any of that, but it's probably read some of that in the actual docs, etc. So you can see here that straight away, it basically is giving me a refusal on the, let's talk about politics stuff. Maybe we can just discuss the latest sneaker releases instead. So I'm not saying this is a great agent or anything like that, but 
think of this. I haven't written a single line of code in here, right? I've literally just copied these across here and, you know, I haven't even done a sort of follow-up prompt. If we go back in here, there's literally just one prompt from me. So this is just literally a one-shot prompt where I've loaded the context of the model with a YouTube video and three text files that include things like the docs and stuff like that. And you got to think this is sort of like the way we should be sort of programming with these sorts of models. You know, even if I do know exactly what it is I want, it's pretty clear nowadays that you probably want to use something like model context protocol to be able to feed in the various documentation, code examples, things like this, whether you're using Cursor, Windsurf, or any of the other sort of coding tools. Now, in this case, because the model has got such a large context window, we can just chuck the whole lot in at once. We don't even need to use an MCP to go off and get various parts of it, etc. It's all just in here at once. Okay, in this example, we can also use it for doing a variety of different things. So you can see here, I'm basically, again, stuffing the context, in this case, half a million plus tokens, basically just asking it, take this video and code up a learning plan website slash app for me to learn the facts in this video. I have no idea what it's going to actually do at this point, but I kind of feel like this is the sort of thing that people are going to be using to make custom learning plans. In this case, I'm picking facts about ancient Rome, but really this could be a lesson from one of the Stanford lectures. It could be anything that you really want to learn nowadays. You're probably far better to chuck it into this model get it to basically work out ways to help you learn this and test it. You could do things like flashcards, etc. going through this. All right, let's stop for a second and just see what it comes up with. Okay, so it came up with a bunch of good ideas and it's got thoughts, but clearly I wasn't clear enough in that I wanted some code. So without it giving me that, I've just asked it, give me the code, please. Okay, so you can see here that it has basically gone through the video, extracted out a whole bunch of facts, and then line them up with YouTube. So if I come in here, I've basically got various facts from the video in here. I can press a fact and it will take me to that point. Right? Okay, so you can see that this is just in a couple of minutes being able to go through a video extract out the information, line it up. Now, I haven't really asked it to do anything except help me to learn these different facts in here, but you could imagine that I could flag these or have some of them become flashcards for testing me, a whole bunch of different things. So you've got to think that it's not just vibe coding that is now viable. It's really sort of vibe anything, vibe learning, vibe marketing plans, vibe sales letters, all these kinds of things become possible when you've got a model this strong. So just to finish up, I'd say that if you haven't already been playing with Gemini Pro 2.5, you should definitely check out this new version of the model. And if you have been playing with it, go and test out now what wasn't working before and see for yourself what they've improved here and what you can actually do with this. Having the ability to be able to just put in docs, tutorials, and have it generate code on the fly is kind of like an insane way to be able to learn a new framework a lot quicker than just purely having to go through it step by step. Go check out the model. Let me know where you're seeing it being stronger. If there are any areas that you notice that it's weaker or anything, that's also really interesting to sort of check out. From what I understand, we're going to be able to get summaries of the thinking in the API in the not too distant future. That is one of the things that is planned for this. And that's going to be really interesting to play with as well as we go through this. Anyway, I love to hear what you guys think about this. For me, I really do think this ability to stuff a very large context into a model that's this good is just really amazing with what you want it to do. You could imagine that if I spent a whole bunch of time making a really nice learning app with this, with multiple prompting and stuff like that, in the future, I could just take the code from that, put that in there, give it a new video and say, make me a new app for this. And it's going to be able to just reuse that context 
for building whatever it is that you want. This is really a game changer for this, and it really sort of sets up the ability now for agents just to automatically code things themselves. But that's something we can talk about on a different day. Anyway, as always, if you found the video useful, please click like and subscribe, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.